Hello my beautiful friends, it's Amanda here and today we are talking about the Game of Thrones collaboration with Urban Decay. I'm actually going to have two videos about this collection. Today's video is going to be the full rundown. This is a large collection. It has a large eyeshadow palette. So in order to do justice to these products, I am going to do a separate video for the eyeshadow tutorials today. It's all about info, swatches. Urban Decay was kind enough to send me the entire collection ahead of release so that I could show everything to you guys. This collection is dropping on April 14th. I believe it will go live on the Urban Decay website at midnight. I'm not sure if or when this will roll out to other retailers. I know in the past their other collaborations have shown up in Ulta and Sephora later after it first launches on their site. I don't know if this one is going to be available from other retailers, but I will keep the description box updated as I get more info. Game of Thrones is a huge show. People are just absolutely diehard for this series. I have never watched the show. <laughs> don't, don't shoot the messenger, okay? It's just, it's not my style. It seems like a really well done show. It looks very cinematically beautiful. It just seems a little bit too intense, a little too dark and murdery for me, which I not saying it shouldn't exist. I'm glad if you love it. It's just not my style. So please be patient with me. Some of these names are kind of crazy. So if I mispronounce anything, <laughs> just you know, go easy on a girl, okay? I'm gonna go through everything and I'm gonna insert all the close-ups in the corner over here as I talk about everything. First thing you need to know, there will be a vault collection available where you can get all of the pieces all together. It will come in a cool like collector's box and the vault is gonna be $250. That's a lot of cash, but if you want everything you can get it all in one fell swoop. Just note that with the Volt, you're not gonna get any of the outer packaging. These pieces are gonna be individually placed into the Volt box, so there won't be any of the outer packaging that I'm gonna show you. There are two eyeshadow brushes. These are very intricately designed. They are very beautiful. I don't think that the bristles seem shabby at all. I think they feel like really really nice brushes but I just don't see these being practical. I don't imagine anyone being like oh I'm gonna throw this sword brush in my makeup bag for traveling. Like I think these are collector's items. I really think we need to take the approach on all of these items that this really is a collector's item type of thing. Not to say that any of these products are terrible or anything, it's just practicality wise I don't see myself grabbing a sword. These brushes are pretty cool nonetheless. They're $28 a piece. We have a fluffier, more blending type of brush called Jon Snow's Long Claw. And then there is a more dense flat brush. This would be a great packing brush called Arya Stark's Needle. Next up, let's talk about this Dracarys Lip and Cheek Stain. This is $26. It does come in a little bottle with a dropper. I'm gonna show you a demo of me applying this to my cheeks and my lips. I just used a small duo fiber brush to pick up the product and stipple it onto my cheeks. I think this looks absolutely beautiful on the skin. I also use my finger to tap it onto my lips to apply it as a lip color. It didn't really show up that great on me. I don't know if it's because I was wearing lip balm earlier, but I do appreciate that this isn't super, super staining like the Benefit Benetint. This was much easier to work with. It wasn't quite as liquidy in texture. It had a little bit more viscosity to it. I didn't expect to like this product at all, but I love the way this looks on my cheeks. 
and not so great on the lips for me anyway, but I think this is absolutely beautiful as a cheek stain. Next, let's talk about the highlighting palette. This is the Mother of Dragons highlighting palette. It does have a little mirror inside. There are three shades of the Afterglow highlighter, which is a formula I really, really like. This is another one that surprised me. I did not think these shades were going to work for me at all, but I actually took this sort of duochrome pink purple shade and put it all over my cheeks on top of that cheek stain and it looked gorgeous. Then I used a little bit of the golden highlighter and popped that right on the cheekbones, right on the top of the cheekbones for a little extra glow. And this actually, this is another one that surprised me. I didn't think I was gonna like the shades in here and they ended up working really, really great for me. I do like that there's actually a deeper shade in here because if you mix the different powders in here, this little palette is gonna be able to work for a lot of people. I'm a big fan of the Afterglow Highlighter Formula and I do think that this Mother of Dragons palette lives up to that formula. This palette is retail priced at $36. I'm just going to show you some quick finger swatches now so that you can see what these shades look like individually just applied to my skin. There are four Vice lipsticks in this collection. One is a sheer finish. That's the one I'm wearing on my lips today. There are two metallic shades and then one of their comfort mattes. Of course, everything in this collection has special packaging. I think the lipsticks are some of the prettiest, just in my opinion, with the special packaging on the lids of the lipstick tubes. These are all priced at $19 a piece. And again, I'm gonna show you some quick swatches here. You will see me wearing all four different shades in my next tutorial video. So I know I usually do lip swatches, but just stay tuned. You're gonna be able to see all of these applied to the lips soon. The last thing before we get to the palette are four new shades of the 24-7 Glide On Eyeliners. These are priced at $22 and they all have an iridescent, sparkly or metallic type of finish. None of these are matte shades. I'm not usually an eyeliner girl, but I'm gonna do my best to use everything so that you can see everything in action. For now, I'm gonna show you some swatches of these four eyeliner shades just applied to my arm. Last but not least is the Game of Thrones eyeshadow palette. This thing is a beast. It looks like if you put it on a shelf, it would look like the spine of a very long book. When you open up the top, there's a mirror inside, but this isn't where the eyeshadow is housed. When you open this up, there's an iron throne. It's just the most extra. Like I said, we need to view all of this in the context of a collector's item because this is incredibly unnecessary. <laughs> In my opinion, I'm not a fan of like crazy bulky extra packaging like this, but I do think that it makes sense in a Game of Thrones collaboration. So while it's not my cup of tea from a makeup reviewing standpoint, I don't hate it for this. I think it makes sense. I think a lot of people are going to like this and find a lot of joy in this. So I'm not mad at it. It's just it's not my favorite thing. One feature that I do like about this very extra bulky packaging is you pull this tab here and the palette pulls out and it is not attached. So you can completely remove this. It makes it so much more user friendly. I mean, obviously you couldn't just take this on its own and travel with it, but I do appreciate the fact that they made this removable so that you're not like, clunking around with this thing trying to do your makeup. This palette is $65. That's pretty expensive for 20 shades in a palette, but you have to keep in mind, not only are you paying for like the Game of Thrones name, you are getting this crazy over the top packaging, which really is kind of an art piece in and of itself. If you, if you value it that way, then you know, I don't think it's that crazy of a price tag. I'm gonna go ahead and show you some swatches of all the shades from this palette. I did swatch each of these little 
color-coded sections individually. That way you can see what all these shades look like applied to the skin. I am gonna do both finger and brush swatches. So you'll see the swatches applied to the inside of my arm with no primer down first. The finger swatches will be on top and then the corresponding brush swatch will be below. As always for my brush swatches, I used my e.l.f. flat eyeshadow brush. Completely dry, didn't dampen for any of the swatches and I clean the brush off in between each shade using the Vera Mono Color Switch. That way there's no color transfer in between swatches. So let's take a look at those swatches and then I'll wrap up all my thoughts on this eyeshadow palette at the end. Now that you've seen all the swatches of the palette, I just wanna give you my perspective on it. Keep in mind, I am not a Game of Thrones stan. I'm trying to appreciate this collection from that point of view as well as somebody who is an avid makeup lover and somebody who reviews and tries a lot of makeup. I already kind of went over my thoughts on this packaging. I don't love it. I've heard some people say that they wish that this palette had been broken up and actually sold in these four little individual palettes instead. I do think that's a good idea from a consumer point of view, but I think from Urban Decay's point of view, this does make more sense because anybody who loves Game of Thrones is gonna buy this whole palette. So had they offered the smaller palettes, they wouldn't have been able to sell as many of these big Mamma Jammas. So, I can kind of see both ways. I think if you're a Game of Thrones lover, you're just a fan of the show and you are excited about this collection because of that, it doesn't really matter what's in here <laughs> because you're gonna be hyped for it no matter what. I will say that I think the quality of these shadows is great. I do think Urban Decay has a good eyeshadow formula. It's not my like all time number one favorite eyeshadow formula, but by no means is it bad. It's not the bottom of the list. I think these performed really well, both applied with a finger or applied with a brush. They blend out well. Performance wise, I'm not mad at it. These four shades over here are supposed to be like transformative topper shades. And I think three out of the four really do work in that way. This one that I'm actually wearing all over my lids called Winterfell is super, super opaque. So this will kind of take over whatever it's applied on top of. But the other three work well in that capacity and I think that's a cool idea, a cool thing to be in this palette. My friend Monica is a huge Game of Thrones fan. When this collection arrived in PR, I immediately had her come over and check it out because she's such a huge Game of Thrones fan and she kind of explained some of the meanings behind the names and how to pronounce some of the names to me. So thank you, Monica, if you're watching this. And she said that when she looked at this palette online, she was overwhelmed because it looks really, really colorful. I think that is a product of the packaging. What I wanna do is show you a picture of this palette where I've blacked out the like background so that you can really just see the shades without any interference. When you take a look at this palette, just the shades without this no doubt beautiful palette background. There's really only like five colorful shades in here. This is an overwhelmingly neutral palette. The only shades that I think are really colorful are this light blue, which is a very sheer shade anyway, Frozen North, which is a gorgeous blue, the Sight, this green shade, and then Stormborn and Bend the Knee are the two purples. 
Everything else is very neutral. There's a lot of brown, gold, even this purpley shade called Weirwood Leaves and Lannister Red are very neutral and brown once they're applied to the skin. I don't think this is an overwhelmingly colorful palette. So if you're nervous about that, rest assured, it looks a lot more colorful just because of this packaging, but this is quite a wearable selection of shades. However, my main number one gripe isn't even the crazy packaging. I, I can make peace with that. I think that makes sense. There are only three matte shades in here. This is 20 eyeshadows and three of them are mattes. <sighs> That's my biggest problem with this palette. Not the price, not how extra it is. They could have at least, at least like five, five mattes. I mean, I probably still would have complained about that, but just three mattes is not enough mattes for me. Like when you already have a 10 pound palette, it's not literally 10 pounds, but you know what I mean. When you already have this gigantic beast of a palette that you're working with, you shouldn't have to pull out another palette to make looks. I just really wish there were more mattes in here. I think the matte formulation in this palette is absolutely gorgeous. It's buttery, it's pigmented, but not too pigmented that it's difficult to work with. I would be crazy about this palette, even as somebody who's not a Game of Thrones stan, if there were more mattes. I don't even want crazy colored mattes. One like blue or even a gray matte in this little section up here would have been great. And Maybe if one of these purples, instead of two shimmer purples, if we had had like a lavender matte shade or even one of the golds, make it like a yellowy gold matte shade, I would have been all about that. But that's my biggest gripe, just lack of mattes. Overall, I am a much bigger fan of this collection than I expected to be. When I first saw images of it, and even when it first arrived on my doorstep, I was kind of feeling iffy about it since I don't have that emotional tie to the Game of Thrones aspect. But a lot of these products really surprised me, especially the lip and cheek stain, which I didn't love for lips, but I do love for cheeks. Looks beautiful. I can see that looking great on a lot of different skin tones. Same for the highlighter palette. Thought it looked a little crazy, but it actually looks crazy beautiful on the skin. I'm not a big eyeliner girl, so I'm not gonna weigh in on those. They look like cool shades. It's just not really my jam. I don't really have a strong feeling either way about the lipsticks either, but I do think the lipsticks have the prettiest packaging. And the palette, honestly, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, this is kind of the must have piece. This is a really cool collector's item along with the brushes. It's just a bonus really that the shades and the formulations in here are great. I do think this is really usable. It's not my all time favorite Urban Decay palette, but I do think that the formulas in here are good. And if you love Game of Thrones, then this is gonna be a must have. Like I said, I will have a bunch of eyeshadow tutorials featuring this palette and the eyeliners and all the lipsticks coming up soon. If it's not my very next video, then I will make it a bonus video over the weekend. So keep an eye out for that. Until then, I would love to hear what you guys think about this collection. Are you huge Game of Thrones fans? Are you unsubscribing from me because I'm not a huge Game of Thrones fan? Just kidding, please don't do that. You know, it's a good thing that I'm not a Game of Thrones fan because I can be more objective in my reviews, right? Right? I always love to hear what you guys think about things. So please leave a comment down below and as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Er, 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 not even a minute in. Can't speak. All the Game of Thrones fans are gonna be like, it's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Uh, now Harry Potter, I get down with Harry Potter. Dracarys, is that how you say that? Oh gosh, this is gonna be a struggle. Oh brother, Dracarys. I hope I say this stuff right. People are going to be pissed if I don't. Uh, my favorite collection. It's not. <laughs> Ma'am, I'm running out of time. I'm going to have to leave soon. How about I just leisurely sit here then? I really love this gold shade on my lids. I feel fancy. I feel weird with like a really smoky look though. That's not my aesthetic usually. Whew, girl, there's a lot of pieces in this collection. Been filming this all day. <laughs>
my cheeks are shining oh shining like a mother like a mother of a dragon <laughs> oh no i did not just say that <gasps> wow it's time to stop the smoky lower lash lines really throw me off it's about time though because i never had the like super emo eyeliner phase in high school so finally living that out <laughs> get out of my room mom what what is happening we are downward spiraling so quickly continuity baby what what okay okay bye <laughs>